Hello everyone, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP Math. The previous three math videos have dealt with calculating delta V costs of making transfers between the planets in Kerbal Space Program, but there is an important piece of this that I have yet to talk about. With all the planets in constant motion, we need to time our transfer so that we will arrive at our destination at the same time as our target. Well, how can we work this out? Well, let's do the math. Although the math here works the same regardless of which planets you are transferring between, we'll start with what seems to be everyone's favorite interplanetary target, Duna. Let's imagine we want to make a transfer from Kerbin to Duna. We know from our previous work that the closer we are to the parent body, in this case the Sun, the quicker we will get around in our orbit. As Kerbin is going faster than Duna, we know that our ship will be going faster than Duna at the time when we leave Kerbin. This means we must leave Kerbin when it is behind Duna in its orbit about the Sun. Otherwise our excess speed will have us arriving ahead of Duna by the time we get out there. The question is, how far behind should Kerbin be when we leave on our journey? The angle measured at the Sun that Duna is ahead of Kerbin is called Duna's phase angle relative to Kerbin. We'll represent this in our diagram with the Greek letter theta. Phase angle is always measured in the same direction that the planets are moving, which is counterclockwise in this view. We want to know what phase angle will correctly time our encounter with Duna. The first thing we need to figure out is just how long this journey will take. At this point, we're going to simplify the problem by assuming that Duna's orbit isn't elliptical, but rather a circle with a radius equal to the semi-major axis. Recall that the semi-major axis is just the average of Duna's shortest and furthest distances from the Sun measured from the Sun's center. Duna's semi-major axis is 2.073 times 10 to the 10 meters. This number and all the following numbers can be looked up on the KSP wiki, link in the description. As mentioned in previous videos, approximating orbits to circles is also used in calculations on delta V maps like this one. This approximation is again used at this popular website which will calculate these phase angles for you. Again, links in the description. Although these approximations are good ones, it's important to note that they are approximations and not 100% accurate. This is especially true if one of the orbits involved is very elliptical. In game, always give yourself some wiggle room. Our transfer will be along an elliptical orbit from Kerbin's orbit with a radius of 1.36 times 10 to the 10 meters out to Duna's orbit. In our orbital period video, we learned that we can calculate the length of time to complete such an orbit using this formula, where mu, the funny you looking thing, is the standard gravitational parameter of the parent body. For the Sun, this number is 1.72 times 10 to the 18 meters cubed per second squared. The A in the formula is the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit. Here, that number is 1.717 times 10 to the 10 meters. Putting both these numbers into our orbital period formula gets us the period of our transfer orbit to be 1.306 times 10 to the 7 seconds. This would be the time it would take us to complete this entire orbit. But our journey is complete when we get to Duna, so we will only be doing half this orbit. As such, the journey from Kerbin to Duna will take 6.530 times 10 to the 6 seconds. Of course, during this time Duna will have moved. We'll label the angle through which it has moved alpha. Calculating this angle is pretty easy. First we work out Duna's orbital period by putting its semi-major axis into the same formula as before. This gets us 1.732 times 10 to the 7 seconds, which is the time that Duna takes to complete its full 360 degree rotation about the Sun. All we need to do is work out what fraction of this time elapsed during our transfer. So we take our transfer time, divide it by the time for the full orbit to get this fraction, and then just multiply by 360 to get our alpha to be 136 degrees. We're almost there. Because we did exactly half the transfer orbit, alpha and theta must add to half a rotation, that is 180 degrees. This gives theta, our desired phase angle, to be 44 degrees. 
So now we know that the right time to leave Kerbin is when Duna's phase angle relative to Kerbin is 44 degrees. Let's do this one more time for the return journey. Remember, Kerbin is the faster planet, so we need to leave Duna when Kerbin is coming up behind Duna in its orbit. What we want is this, Kerbin's desired phase angle relative to Duna. Notice that, relative to Duna, this angle goes backwards to Kerbin. As such, it will be negative. Thankfully, the transfer orbit from Duna to Kerbin is exactly the same as before and will take the same amount of time, namely 6.53 times 10 to the 6 seconds. Of course, during this time, Kerbin will have moved through some angle, which again we'll call alpha. This time, we need to know Kerbin's orbital period, which works out to be 9.205 times 10 to the 6 seconds. We divide the transfer time by Kerbin's period, multiply by 360, to get an alpha of 255 degrees. Just as before, alpha plus theta is 180 degrees, which gets us a desired phase angle of negative 75 degrees for our return journey. This process is exactly the same regardless of which planets you are transferring between, so you now have the ability to calculate the desired phase angle for a transfer between any two planets. And by the way, this works in the real world too in case you would like to work out what a journey to Mars would have to be like. Unfortunately, as of the publishing of this video, the game doesn't give you any way to directly measure the phase angle between planets. I dealt with this the best I could in my stock tutorial video on interplanetary transfers, but in my own game I would be installing mods for this. Mods like Kerbal Alarm Clock and Transfer Window Planner will work out transfer windows for you, but I would like to conclude this video by taking a look at how we can use the mod Kerbal Engineer Redux to easily measure the phase angle directly. Links to all these mods are in the description. And I also want to take this opportunity to welcome aboard my two newest patrons, Nemezrakom B4 and Roy Treves. Thank you very much. Your support is very much appreciated, as is the support of all of my patrons. And if you would like to join the team as well, well, there's a link down there in the description. So here I am in the tracking station with Kerbal Engineer installed and you can see over here that I have this extra window with some more data. There is an extra button down here on the bottom right that you can turn. This is the control bar that we can turn on and off. You can also, if you want, get into editing it to either remove or add more information to that information window. But, you know, we'll get to that actually in just a little bit. What I want to draw attention to is these two values down here, phase angle and transfer angle, which right now are set to zeros. And that's because I've not selected anything as a target. So let's imagine we're going to Duna. We just worked out the phase angles for going to Duna. So why don't we scroll on out until we see Duna here. Here's Duna right here. And we will select it. And as soon as we select Duna, notice that we have information here now. So what is it doing? Well, number one is it's measuring our current phase angle. And remember what that means is, if you imagine lines joining Kerbin and Duna to the center of the sun, and we're using Kerbin as a reference, and you notice it's reminding us of that right here. It's from Kerbin as a reference, we are measuring a phase angle around this way to Duna of 322 degrees. Down below that, it gives us what our transfer angle that we worked out. 44.3, oh, yada, 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 it's got it to a lot more accuracy than we worked out. But you can see it's the familiar 44 degrees that we just worked out from this video. So if I wanted to do a transfer from Kerbin to Duna, clearly I need to get this phase angle to be 44 degrees. And by the way, you can switch this all around. Like for instance, I've got Duna selected. Notice there's a button here that says use Duna as a reference. And you can go, okie dokie, let's use Duna as a reference. Notice it goes back down to zeros and this time select Kerbin. And now it's telling me the transfer angle to get from, a, from Duna, reference Duna, 
to Kerbin is negative 75 degrees. Again, what we had already worked out, and it's measuring our current phase angle, which by the way was exactly the same as our previous phase angle, except now it's a negative. It's a negative, so I guess it's measuring it in this direction, 322 degrees, but you could also add 360 to this number to get what this angle from Duna to here to be a positive phase angle. So if you ever see a number that you find a little bit weird, don't forget that these angles you can add or subtract 360 degrees as many times as you like to get an angle that looks a little bit more comfortable for you. They're all the same. Anyway, why don't we do ourselves a transfer from Kerbin to uh, Duna? So we'll select Kerbin again as our reference. We'll We'll uh, select Duna here. We got our phase angle of 44.3 degrees. So let's do some time warping. It's going to take us, unfortunately, a little while. We got to go all the way around. Getting close in here now. We're at 44.4. That is close enough. Don't forget, these numbers shouldn't be taken as 100% exact. Kerbal Engineer is doing the same calculation that we did for calculating these phase angles. And although it's showing it the five digits of accuracy, there's no way it's as precise as that. So don't get too hung up with getting it exactly these two to match. Anyway, I happen to have orbiting around Kerbin the Duna mission that I used in my tutorial. Let's get them out to Duna. And as I talked about this mission in all of its detail in that tutorial, link in that info tab, why don't we cut to the back end of this mission where we can use Kerbal Engineer again to help us get back home, but in a different way. So, we are now done our mission, we've gone down to the surface, come back up, and we're ready to get back home. Let's look at how we can use Kerbal Engineer to help us again. Now, one thing we could do is go right back to the tracking station, but you can also do it from here. If you look, we got all kinds of information coming up here from Kerbal Engineer. A lot of it repeats the sort of orbital information that you are used to from uh, the stock game. But there's a lot more you can add to this, including the phase angle. So let's look at how we can do that. So I'm going to go over here to the right and open up our little Kerbal Engineer menu. And you can see I can edit the two HUDs. I can also add in more HUDs if I want to. I'm going to edit that second HUD. And what I want to do is add phase angle to the mix. So we're going to... Phase angle is in the rendezvous section, so we're going to select the rendezvous section. And we're going to look for phase angle. Oh, and here it is right off the bat and we're just gonna hit install. So what it's done down here is the stuff that is installed in this HUD and phase angle has now been installed here. But if you look, it's not there. Let's close all this. It isn't here because phase angle is only relevant once you have selected a target. So let's go select Kerbin as a target. So we're gonna zoom on out. And over here, we're going to select Kerbin and we're going to set that as a target. And now suddenly it is measuring our phase angle of negative 279.75 whatever degrees. And we know now that that needs to be negative 75 degrees. If you want to, you can put in that transfer angle as well. Let's actually do that. Again, that would be under the rendezvous tab. And over here, there is transfer angle. We'll add that to this. And you can see here it's telling us what we need for our transfer angle. Again, remembering that although there's five digits of accuracy here, just go with negative 75. <laughs> so the interesting thing to note here is that Kerbal Engineer recognizes, oh my gosh, you've selected a planet, so you want planetary phase angles, not vessel phase angles. Unlike the game, if we go down here, and select our, where is it, under the rendezvous tab, a phase angle. It's giving us a phase angle that's completely useless. So squad, look here how simple this could be. If we select a planet, change this to the planetary phase angle, you'll make all of our lives so much easier. But anyway, with that, well, we can just time work until we get our phase angle what we need it to be. And as my Kerbals begin their journey back home, I'm going to be drawing this video to a close. I hope you found it useful and I hope that it helps you in your own interplanetary transfers.